This will be very close, and I think the Packers have a very real chance to win this game, although I would not be shocked if Tom Brady, Mr. Postseason, ends up pulling it off. But I, I do think that um, that the Packers have much more of a chance than I even thought back in Week 6, and then I would think, if you look back at that game, it wasn't nearly as much of a separation as the scoreboard said it was, right? It was just a couple of mistakes here and there that really kind of turned the tide of the entire game. Yeah, it'll be very exciting to see this one, as you mentioned. Cold climate, but as Tom Brady says, he... He likes the warmth, but he knows how to play in the cold. Foxborough, man, that place is that place is Bridget. awful. Hey guys, this is Drinks with Binks. Welcome on in. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. This is the show that sits down with some of the biggest names in sports, entertainment, media, and anything else. And we do it over a beverage of their choice. Today's guest quite literally just came off air from hosting the show that she hosts. And I have to tell you, I was waiting to see what she wore on her show to see what I would wear here. And I thought of almost wearing the same thing she was wearing. And then I realized that would be really weird. So with that, I cannot wait to welcome in today's guest, Laura Rutledge, host of NFL Live on ESPN, sideline reporter for Monday Night Football, host of SEC Nation. Thank you so much for joining us here, straight from talking about football right into drinking and banking. Oh, I'm so excited to drink and bank. I, I got to tell you, I think that what you went with outfit wise is way cooler than what I'm wearing. So while I would love to have been twins with you, you definitely outdressed me and you had an advantage because I didn't know what you were going to wear. Yeah, I know. If, if you had known what I was going to wear earlier today, you'd been like, OK, I need to get this sparkly blazer. Oh, I, I actually asked my boyfriend, I was like, I have a you, you are wearing sort of like a jumpsuit that is burgundy and I have have a, a dark green one that I was thinking of wearing and I was like is that soups weird if I wear already Never. knowing what she's wearing that I wear it as well and then we're just like hey we're twins I would have I would have embraced it in fact if you want to make an outfit change yeah like, but by all means I have to change in the commercial break um but you know in all seriousness it's great to have you on the show here today we know you're so busy being on air also being a mom you do so much and congratulations on all your success and for NFL live in particular you guys came together during the pandemic like your whole crew that you guys have and the unique part about it is that you have this great chemistry with one another and some of you aren't even in studio what's it been like kind of getting the show off the ground and having it work when you don't even get to see everyone all the time oh well thank you first of all for that that means a lot coming from you i think um when we were first talking about what this show would look like obviously we thought we would be together you know and so everything that we'd initially planned for the show and how you would do normal television went out the window and, and i think for us what really was key is just the consistency every day of talking to each other and seriously i don't know how we're not probably sick of each other by now because we talk to each other all day long and even when we're not on the show our i know it's this so annoying to be like our group text is the best but it really is a really fun group text and we're constantly talking about football but also other things and um just have gotten really close with with marcus and mina kimes and dan orlovsky and you know, it's interesting because I I knew Marcus. I've known Marcus since 2014 when we started at SEC Network mm -hmm. together. So that relationship was already forged. And then we met Dan when we started doing Get Up together. And so the three of us spent a ton of time together talking ball. And then Mina came into the mix as somebody that I have idolized for years and just think she's incredible. And so to be able to, to fangirl over her, but then also now call her a close friend has been such a joy for me. So I think the key is like, when it comes to chemistry, and you know this so well, you can't manufacture it. So it's just mm -hmm. something that exists within people who truly do enjoy each other and love each other and um, then also love talking football. And I think that's been the key for us. And, and I really do look forward to being on this show and, and getting to work with these people every single day. Well, it, it shows, and, and you can really see that as a viewer of it, is that you guys like one another, you get along, and you're right, you cannot manufacture that chemistry. So cheers to you, Laura. We are, we'll toast to drinks with thanks, toasting Woo! to Laura Rutledge and NFL Live, and being able to broadcast during a pandemic, and we will have a Super Bowl. Uh, we should. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a Super Bowl. Okay. 
But I find it interesting. You've done a lot of work with SEC. We have AFC Championship coming up. We got Bills and Chiefs. You've covered the Bills, covered the Chiefs. But what SEC school would you say the Bills most closely resemble? I would say that the the Bills are are kind of like um, even Florida lately because their offense has gotten really good and the scheme has been great. Um, And they're a team that, you know, that has has this great fan base that's trying to like build it back up to championship caliber right and, they, and their fans are just willing them on you know which kind of like florida ever since they lost tim tebow a little bit and they're trying to you know get back mm-hmm. to those championship ways and they, they got real close this year the bills are closer right than florida in this particular comparison but yeah i think the the offense clicking so well and just how formidable they are in that realm kind of makes me think that the Bills are similar to the Florida Gators if I was making a comparison. Okay, so they're also jumping through tables, maybe a little bit of a crazy fan base. That's what it's like in the SEC. Yeah. LSU people are eating fried gators during, that's what I know of, of LSU, Florida. But we, I digress. Um, NFC Championship, we've got Brady, Rogers, great matchup. From the people that you're around, you know, the insiders, the analysts, everyone, what's maybe something that someone said that stuck with you and convinced you in that, and that is the reason why blank will win. Yeah, so I think one of the main things is that people look back to the week six matchup between the Packers and Bucks and say, well, the Bucks just dominated Green Bay. So, I mean, maybe they're going to do that again, right? And, and that's just such a cautionary tale about how to look at games because both of these teams are so different now. So I think the reality is it's going to be real close. There's probably snow. It's going to be extremely cold, which Aaron Rodgers is like, hmm. But people need to remember that Tom Brady and at least Rob Gronkowski know that type of weather, that type of environment very well. Yeah. I'm not sure about the rest of the Buccaneers, so that is kind of an interesting point. But I think for me, the, the, the most fascinating way to look at this is that this is a totally different matchup than it was earlier on in the season. And for that reason, there's no way that Aaron Rodgers turns the ball over the way that he did. His passer rating is 35 it's never that low right uh, the next lowest is 91 I mean, he, he is going to be much more dialed in and their offense is in much more of a rhythm and then by the same token the same could be said for the Buccaneers so I, I think just uh, the reality that this will be very close and I think the Packers have a very real chance to win this game although I would not be shocked if Tom Brady Mr. Postseason ends up pulling it off but I, I do think that um that the Packers have much more of a chance than I even thought back in week six. And then I would think if I looked back at that tape, that tape also, if you look back at that game, it wasn't nearly as much of a separation as the scoreboard said it was, right? It was just a couple of mistakes here and there that really kind of turned the tide of the entire game. Yeah, it'll be very exciting to see this one, as you mentioned. Cold climate, but as Tom Brady says, he he likes the warmth, but he knows how to play in the cold. Foxborough, man, that place is, that place is Bridget. awful. Uh, yeah, the different words we used, but they're very cold. Uh, we have so much more. We want to talk to you with you, Laura Rutledge from NFL Live on ESPN, including maybe what Baby Reese is thinking ahead of the Super Bowl. I'm not sure if that's really her domain or not. We will find out after this break on Drinks with Banks. Hey, guys, it's Molly McGrath, and I just had a non-alcoholic Drinks with Banks. Hey guys, welcome back in to Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. I'm so thrilled to be joined by the wonderfully talented and effervescent Laura Rutledge from NFL Live on ESPN, who has just climbed the career ladder and is just slaying it like a boss. I had another mug sitting here, not the one I'm drinking out of, but we got double mugs here on the show. And before we get into baby Reese, I did want to ask you about uh, a really a great thing that's going to happen with the Super Bowl, which is Sarah Thomas to be the first female to officiate uh, a Super Bowl game for women in this industry, for women in football. Uh, what kind of role does her presence play? Gosh, she's such a rock star. I, I think the thing that is so awesome about this is there are the people out there that are like, oh, well, you know, they're just trying to get a token woman in there and, and all of that. And, and no, <laughs> I mean, that, that's not the reality at all, which is a ridiculous thing to say anyway. But uh, Sarah is so deserving of this opportunity because of the work that she has put in and put on display. She's an excellent official. And um, just to watch her 
do her thing and to just uh, continue to impress and to be truly recognized for her merits as an official. I think that to me is the story um, that she she has continued to be a pioneer, but also is just doing what she does at such a high level. So I cannot wait to watch her in action. And I know there are a lot of us that are going to really enjoy seeing her out there on that big stage. Yes, and the NFL this year has embraced a number of women in positions normally held by men in terms of coaches and seeing people in front office positions and whatnot. Let's get to the good stuff, which is Baby Reese, who, for those of you who don't know, uh, Laura's baby went 11-2 and two in picking SEC games this year. Wild. Have to ask, when you were filming or picking these, making these picks, were you ever, did you ever have to, let's just say, when my boyfriend takes a picture of me, we never use the first one. Did you ever have to redo it in case Baby Reese maybe was a little bit off on her picks? I love it. So it's funny because a lot of people have been like, well, you guys are putting a pop tart under one of the helmets or something like that, which, which we never did. Okay. Full transparency. I, I would admit it, right? I'd be like, all right, I'm doctoring these picks and these are actually my picks. And somehow I'm controlling this one-year-old, like a, <laughs> a, a baby knows that you really can't control them and they do whatever yeah. they want to do. So the only times that we would have to do a second take would be because sometimes Reese would come out of the, you know, door that we would let her out of. We'd let her out like, you know, she was a bull, uh, running of the bulls or something. She would come ripping out of there and she wouldn't stop and make a pick. She would just run past and, and be like, ah, you know, I ran past the helmets. So th those times, obviously, we had to, to redo it. But it was funny because my husband, uh, Josh Rutledge, went to, I don't know why I said his last name. Anyway, whatever. That's his name. <laughs> He went to Alabama, so and I went to Florida. Uh, so people were like, well, Josh is making her pick Alabama. She picked Alabama many times, which is a big reason why her record was so good, because Alabama was so good. Um, but truly, I think she liked the red helmet. Like, that that's the only thing I can figure out, because we would even put it on different sides sometimes to see if maybe she was veering toward one side. Right. No, she picked it every time. There were a few fake outs that, that were a little dicey. Like we, we had to go to the uh, the graphics department and, and the stats department at ESPN to sort of come up with her final record because there were mm. a couple that some fan bases were like, well, she put that helmet out of the way. So that means, she, you know, so we got, but anyway, 11 and two remarkable. I, I got to tell you, there were some people that were tweeting me that were like, when's the pick coming? Cause I need to put my bet in. Uh, so I continue to make money off the of baby Reese. So she's a real cash cow already. Yeah, well, people are crazy, as we've figured out. And I think maybe your husband might have been spending time putting that Alabama colors in front of her and associating it. Well, you've been on NFL Live. You never know. Um, I'd love to keep talking. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to keep talking about this, like, quite literally. Um, there's so many more things I want to get to with you, including the fact that you do have a baby. You are hosting the show every single day. We mentioned you were flying to go be on Get Up. You're doing Monday Night Football. How do you manage everything? Oh, well, I feel like there are some days when I think, Oh yeah. Like I need the boss mug. I'm nailing it. You know, th and those days are, are very few and far between the rest of the time. I'm like, Oh, what am I doing? And I'm, I'm failing at everything. And, you know, I think these are normal thoughts for uh, anybody who's trying to be a mother or really probably anybody in life, to be totally honest. But what I found is that for me, the key has been whenever I'm at home, which I do get to be home every day with this schedule, which is so amazing. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm fully invested. So that means like I'm inside Reese's princess house with her and we are princesses together and we are making tacos in her baby food truck. When I'm at work, I am also receiving photos of her and thinking about her and thinking, okay, what should I be you know, doing to make sure that her life is great? But I'm also invested in, in work and, and trying to be just firmly where my feet are. Um, and that's helped some, but I don't know. I, every day it's like an adventure. And I, I am the first to admit that I have nothing figured out. And I am constantly trying to um, just juggle it all the best that I can. And uh, my husband deserves a ton of credit because he works full time as well. And is a lot of times doing double duty and, and um, you know, keeping Reese under control. And so, yeah, it's just an adventure, but one that I, I tell you what, it's a, I was a little hesitant to have a child, like at this point in my career, I thought things are kind of moving and changing for me and, and could be really a bad time to sort of 
put this in the mix, right? And and then it happened, and it, it's such a blessing. And we were like, okay, you know, we're gonna we're obviously gonna make this work somehow. Um, and what I found is that all those worries have just been so washed away. Like I could never imagine my life without having this great child and um, and just being able to experience being a parent and all my worries about, well, people are going to say, oh, her career's over or she's washed up. Those were all in my head. Th those were not coming from uh, anybody who was a peer in this business or a boss or anything like that, that people couldn't have been more supportive just throughout. And so I think that's always my um, message. I'll hear from a lot of women who are like, God, you know, do you think that it, it stunted your career growth at all? I, I would say absolutely not. Now, it made me crazy with my schedule, but but that's it, right? Like, if, if nothing else, it's made me be able to relate to coaches and, and athletes who have children uh, a lot more than I could before. I can't imagine anyone would ask if it stunted your career growth, considering that you literally have like the ultimate dream job at this point. And I'm sure you have even more dreams beyond this. But I like that you address that. Uh, we do have to go to break. But um, I think there is definitely that conversation. And I'm glad that you and people like Molly McGrath, your your colleague, are, are having in that understanding that we have to have a more supportive environment so that women don't feel as though having a baby or being pregnant is a, a detriment to their career advancement or that they have to rush back to work or that it's going to derail them like that this is a normal process of of human life and and undergoing a, a massive thing that your body has to do requires the ability to be able to enjoy it and and also still be able to have a career um and you've been very vocal about that i i liked uh, just say one little thing liked a quote that you had in richard deitch's article in the athletic in that you felt that you rushed back too soon after having a baby um and just that's sometimes something we put on ourselves i guess but that's just an, an idea in the industry that maybe has just that's not necessarily true anymore as what you said um i want to i know i just said all that and we have to go to breaks and my producer is killing me right now for just yammering on um okay Come back on the other side <laughs> we will have yeah what laura said we'll see you there Hey, Amina Kimes, I'm on Drinks with Binks with JSB. Imagine being so cool, you go by initials. MMK. <laughs> okay. We've had an awesome time chatting with Laura here on Drinks with Binks, and we, of course, have a game to play with her because her show, NFL Live, has such great personalities on it, and we also have a Super Bowl coming up, so why not marry the two and have her tell me what player each one of her co-hosts is remaining in the Super Bowl contention. That's how you introduce a segment here on Drinks with Banks. Okay, let's start. Who, what player is Marcus Spears most like? Okay, I'm gonna go against the rules of the game here and say that Marcus Spears is Andy Reid, the Chiefs head coach, and and mainly it's because, and don't get mad at me for going to get, but this is too perfect of a fit. So Andy Reid is hilarious, and so is Marcus, but also he just takes risks and he has, as they like to say, big stones. And I think Marcus is kind of like that too in life. And so I just think that they are very similar and they, those two together would be hilarious. Like someone needs to get Marcus interviewing Andy Reid ASAP. Yeah, need to see Marcus in a Hawaiian shirt. And it sounds like he's a good mask wearer as well, because Andy Reid certainly is. Okay, Dan Orlovsky, what football player would he be like remaining? So I'm gonna say that Dan Orlovsky of the remaining people is like Tom Brady. And I gotta be honest, I'm a little hesitant saying this because it's gonna make Dan's head just go <sighs> So I hope he doesn't see this, even though I know he's going to, because he likes drinks with Because I'll tag him in it and he'll see it. Yeah, yeah. he'll see it. Uh, here's why. So I think when you think about Tom Brady, one of the things that has made him so great is just being meticulous about every area of his life. And that is Dan Orlovsky. Dan Orlovsky has shades of Philip Rivers, who is not in contention for anything at this point other than retirement. Congrats, Philip, um, because he never says a, a bad word. So everything is something else. Like he'll say fudge a lot, which you could imagine what that would be like. So um, for Dan, he's so particular about his study and his preparation for things that he is like Tom Brady. Okay. 
Dan Orlovsky is a narc. Let's move on to Mina Kimes. Who is Mina most like? <laughs> okay, Mina Kimes is Stefan Diggs. Now, here's the thing about Mina. Um, she's obviously, you know, a little bit smaller. So, so is Stefan Diggs. But this really has nothing to do with size. This has to do with being the person that every one of your friends can rely on to be awesome. I mean, I'm talking about she even was somebody's lifeline for who wants to be a millionaire and yeah. was able to help him win a million dollars for charity. That's how clutch Mina Kimes is. Stefan Diggs is clutch. You can't stop him. It doesn't matter how many times you try to do different things. You can't cover him up. And he has been the best binky, for lack of a better way to put it, for Josh Allen this year. He's like that. binky. He's so comfortable because of Stefan Diggs, and that's how Mina makes everyone feel. Stefan Diggs is Josh Allen's security blanket, just like Mina Kimes sounds like is your binky, oh, yeah. She's Laura. my blanket, totally, absolutely. Love it. Well, here we are. We are talking about drinks with Binks and drinks with blankies, I guess, as well. Um, thank you so much, Laura. We got a lot more to come after the break here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joy Taylor, and I had drinks with Binks. All right, we have had an awesome time drinking and binking here with NFL Live host Laura Rutledge, and I realized the last segment would be better called Binkies with Binks. So thank you for helping me trademark a new show, Blankets. Who's, who's your blanket? And that won't do well, I don't think. But you know what will do well is probably Baby Reese's picks for the Super Bowl. Let's get, let's get your prediction and also who you think Baby Reese is going to go with. Okay, so I think the Super Bowl is going to be Packers Chiefs. Um, I wish that I could be like real creative and say that it wouldn't be, but and, and we got four great teams that are still in contention, in contention here. But I, I think it's going to end up being Packers Chiefs, which by the way is a phenomenal Super Bowl. And I think the Chiefs are going to repeat. I think they're just too talented throughout. Their defense is starting to play really well at the right time, kind of like what we saw last season. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's Patrick Mahomes and those weapons. It's just unbelievable. So, and and I think he'll. Play play uh this week and then you know he would play yeah. in the super bowl um and then as far as baby reese she'd probably pick the chiefs because like we said yeah. before she kind of gravitates toward red it seems but listen if she were to go with uh aaron Rodgers and the packers if they end up being the team that does uh end up representing the the nfc then great like i think that's a great choice <laughs> so, yeah she um, certainly loves red so all the red. gamblers and the weirdos out there that dm laura for picks from her baby that's probably what she's gonna be going with but it is always fun chatting football getting to know you we've never really chatted before um thank you so much for doing this and congratulations on everything love watching you on nfl live and where can we find you next in all your social channels Thank you guys so much for having me. I really, I'm telling you, I'm such a fan of the show. I can't even believe I, I'm getting to be on it. Um, I am at Laura Rutledge, really complicated, but you can find me on Instagram and Twitter there. And and really, uh, my main content is Baby Reese. So if you don't like babies, don't, don't find me. But if you like babies, I got some great baby stuff for you right there, as well as some football too, I promise. It's babies and football. There's really nothing better. Just add some booze, but not for the babies, just with the football. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching Drinks with Banks. You know where to find us. Also on our social channels at Fubo Sports on Instagram and Twitter and all of our episodes on YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe and do all that good stuff. And until next time, bottoms up, bitches. Yeah, yeah baby. Yeah. <laughs>